Hey, this is Freddie C., one of the producers of the Living Force podcast and host of Legends Look Back, and you're listening to a sneak peek of one of our Patreon-exclusive shows from Utini.com. If you like this content and you want more, head over to Patreon.com slash Utini. May the Force be with you. I really started Utini because I wanted to share my love of the Expanded Universe with literally anyone that would listen. I'm not saying it's better than the Falcon, but it comes close. It's fun reading into the gaps between the films. Heir to the Empire changed fandom forever. Star Wars is for everyone. Some of the first books I read by myself were Star Wars books. If you're not reading Star Wars books, you're missing out on so much. Her lightsaber hilt was carved from a rancor tooth. I don't think I realized how deep her character got. Who knows where they're headed next? You're listening to Legends Look Back. Podcast with your hosts Jared Mays and Freddie C. Welcome to episode one of Legends Look Back. This is a Patreon exclusive show for Utini.com in which we take members of the Utini team and talk about a Legends book of their choosing, which we're not quite going to do in the very first episode here, but eventually that's what we'll do. Uh, we're taking a personal approach rather than a purely informational one, and we're going to do our best to generate interest in a book, Uh, even if you've never really dipped a toe into Legends, this is still a show for you. And we have a commitment to positivity. We're gonna celebrate the books rather than drag them through the mud. Even though, hey, we might have a laugh here and there. Ultimately, this is all about us loving these books. So I'm Jared Mays, one of your hosts, and I'm joined by... Freddie C, I'm here as well. Welcome, Freddie, excited we get to do this. It's good to be back. I'll say it's episode one, but uh, we did do an episode zero. Hopefully that uh, sees the light of day as well. And uh, <laughs> hey, maybe you've already listened to that, in which case, welcome again to our listeners. We're excited that uh, you're listening to us. We're just thrilled about this project. We've been talking to different members of the Utini team about coming on and talk about uh, their favorite books. In fact, we've got a little bit of competition between um, Charles and Eric about who's going to get to come on for the AC Crispin Han Solo trilogy. So. Uh, we mm-hmm. might actually have to divide that up into multiple episodes, but I'm excited. What about you, Freddie? Yeah, I, I'd have to say, you know, for for the longest time, we've lived with legends. Uh, what what are called legends now, right? But before they were just right. canon. So the fact that we can actually go back and start talking about these again, it feels very nostalgic and it feels good. So I, I'm I'm into it. I like it. Well, it's been fun for me ever since uh, we started talking about this idea. I started going back and thinking about which books do I feel like I've got a really good grasp on and which ones do I need a refresher course and uh, not a pun there for Star Wars Legends fans where bathrooms of course are called refresher units. Uh, anyway, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> uh, I've had to go back and, and, and look at well, which books do I now need, need to reread or want to reread. I'm, I'm thrilled to say, Freddie, that I'm about a third of the way through Kenobi again now that um, we've got the the new Kenobi show announced and Charles has said he wants to come on to talk about that. And man, it's just a fantastic book. Have you read that one? Yeah. Kenobi is definitely uh, in my top five. And if you look on utini.com, it's actually one of the foundational five books. There we go. Uh, I think to this day, it's, it's, you know, until the show comes out and if anything contradicts it, but in the, in the meantime, it is one of, I would say my platinum standard books to read. And uh, you know, Definitely for me too. And, and so we're going to come back to that in a minute. We're going to talk about uh, some standout Legends books for both of us. But at first, we want to give you a little bit of a sense of who the two of us are, since you're going to be listening to us uh, every other week or so, depending on our release schedule and all of that. Um, first and foremost, I'll let Freddie go first. Go ahead. Yeah. How, okay. did, uh, yeah, how did you first get into to Star Wars first? We'll move on to Legends after that. But, but first, how did Star Wars come into your life? So it's very funny. I was probably about five or younger and I was just watching TV and my parents had, uh, I want to say, I, it must have been the Ewok film. It was one of the early films. Oh uh, man, I love those Ewok yeah. movies so much. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I just remember watching it and then my parents introduced me to uh, episode four. Uh, you know, at the time it was just Star Wars. Um, Breach. And, yeah, and, and, and you know, uh, At that time, it was already out for uh, 10 years or so. You know, I mean, it was out for a while. But uh, I got really into it. I started seeing Luke 
uh, do some Jedi, Jedi tricks, use the force. And I had a pencil on the table and I was doing my best to try to move that pencil. <laughs> so that, that, those are my <laughs> early memories for sure. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And if you listen to uh, the Living Force podcast, which I'm going to guess, you know, in terms of the spheres of our users here who are listening to our show, uh, it's got to be at least 99% who are uh, <laughs> yeah. avid Living Force listeners, in which case, welcome. And uh, you've already heard both of us on a couple of um, team cameos, especially the best cameos. Those have been ours. Well, maybe not. We've got <laughs> some great cameos on that show, don't we? We do. We do. We really do. I, I get to edit a lot of those before I, I hand it off to Oh, yeah, that's Matt. right. So uh, they're, they're all really good. But uh, yeah, so you've, you heard, know, you've uh, heard me. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to ask you, you know, let's, let's go with you too. Well, how did you get into it? Yeah, I, you know, I told the story on, on a cameo, but, you know, um, the basic idea was, you know, I was five years old. And my dad has always been a college administrator. And so, I mean, we've had students over at the house, um, you know, just, just almost every day of my life growing up. And so I always thought I was a college student. We were always doing all kinds of different events in terms of going on um, out of state trips and spring break trips and um, this, that, and the other. But this one particular night in 1997, we were going to the movies, which was kind of a new thing for me being five years old, my parents letting me go to the movies. I remember seeing a couple of, maybe a couple of movies in the theaters before Star Wars, but, but only two or three at max. And, this one night, you know, uh, there were like at least 50 college students lined up outside the movie theater, which, I mean, how things have changed. I mean, we're probably talking about Star Wars tickets going on sale uh, tomorrow uh, is one rumor, maybe Monday. Uh, hey, if you're listening to this, maybe you already have your tickets, in which case, congratulations, and I hope yeah. that I do too. Um, but, you know, in 1997, we had to wait in line outside the theater to buy tickets. and. Uh, we did so in the pouring rain. There were like 50 of us. And it was just so electric. People were so excited to go see Star Wars in the theaters. And I had no idea that it was already a 20-year-old movie. I didn't realize it was a re-release. I just thought it was a brand new film. And, uh, I think it was the next day my dad took me to Walmart to buy some action figures. And I think I bought uh, Chewbacca and Boba Fett day one, which I'm very proud of my five-year-old taste. And, Hey, that's and Boba Fett. those are pretty solid buys. Uh, yeah, the funny thing, of course, is I uh, lost that Boba Fett, and oh. I, I was so upset about it that uh, Dad took me back to buy another Boba Fett. In which case, I found the original. So now, over here, right behind me in the Star Wars collection, I have two identical uh, 1996 Power of the Force Boba Fetts. <laughs> oh, that's great! That's fantastic. Yeah. So, so how about uh, how about Star Wars Legends? How'd you get into the EU? So this is actually a really funny story. I, I didn't know Legends existed for a long time. I, had, I did have a book that was kind of like a, a, you know, what was it? Like a visual guide. Uh, everything you needed to know about Star Wars kind of book. And I remember, I think, I'm pretty sure it said that Lars, Owen Lars was Obi-Wan's... Oh, his brother. His brother? Yeah, yeah his, brother, his brother, right? Sure. Yeah, exactly. So I have that book. And that was like probably the first one that I ever had. I wonder what um, that's in. But yeah, I yeah I have it somewhere still. But if any of our listeners first... know the answer, uh, tweet it at us. All right. We oh yeah, absolutely. Answer. We got to know. I have to know. <laughs> but my first actual novel was the True Set Bakura, which I will constantly mention as one of my favorite books, only because it was my first. You want to hear something crazy, Freddie? Go ahead. I've never read a True Set Bakura. I've read. Uh, <laughs> I keep a spreadsheet. I've read over two hundred Star Wars books. And I have not read that one. It's on my short list wow. of like my next five or 10 to get into. That's awesome. So I'm glad to hear you, uh, you like it. Yeah. Well, what happened was I, I forgot to bring a book during our reading hour and my professor, or not even professor, my teacher, uh, I think it was like maybe middle school, beginning of middle school. Maybe let's just say sixth grade, right? It was sitting there and I was like, Perfect oh, Star, Star Wars. Wars age. Yeah. I love Star Wars. I see this book. And I started reading it. I was like, oh my goodness, this is a Star Wars book. And then I looked in the cover and it had a list of all the other books. I was like, there's more? <laughs> oh man, I, I yeah. just spent countless hours looking at that timeline in the front of those, uh, the EU books, you know, the Legends books as a oh, kid. Yeah. I would uh, just look at that map for, for hours. Same, same. And, and uh, from there, I just really got into it and read the, uh, read, I mean, everything you could think of at that point, everything that was out. Um, 
uh, Splinter of the Mind's Eye, which was interesting to read since it, it kind of didn't really match up. Um, yeah. Oh, it's so weird. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's the thing you have to take with Legends, especially now, is you have to read them and, and know that it's, it's Legends. Well, and I think <laughs> that's, know, that's yeah. part of what makes Legends so good, and we'll get into this in a minute, is you have to read every book within its, its context of uh, not just where it fits in the timeline of Star Wars, as in uh, before or after the Battle of Yavin, but in terms of what year in real life it was published. Uh, yeah. I mean, especially the Bantam era books before 99. Uh, I mean, they were just uh, totally ignorant of, of anything that happened in the prequels. And sometimes reading them now, you're like, oh, this is so frustrating. Why aren't they talking about Padme? But uh, they, it, there was no Padme. And so, you know, in, in terms of where it sat in its place in history, uh, it can really help make some sense of, of what's going on in a lot of the Legends books. And I think that's yeah. what makes them great in a lot of ways. Yeah. So, th yeah, that was definitely my, my entrance into the EU. But, uh, yeah, what, what about you? Ah, oh, man, I, I, it's just so awesome to think about the, the kind of experience that I had discovering the EU. I wonder how much of my memory on this is tainted by nostalgia and excitement. Uh, but I lived in a small town in Oklahoma, uh, Chickasha, Oklahoma. If any of our listeners are from Chickasha, uh, go Chicks. Our mascot was literally the fighting Chicks, <laughs> which uh, they're going to have fantastic. to change that sooner or later, uh, you know. Uh, but uh, in our particular town, uh, my mom worked right down the street from the library. And, you know, she would never drop me off for very long by myself, but I was 10 years old and was in the library alone. My mom had dropped me off. She worked right down the street. And I, I just wandered outside the kids section. And I found this massive bookshelf. You know, I was 10 years old. So how big was this bookshelf really? I don't know. But uh, looking up at it, in, in hindsight, it was just this, this high as the eye could see. And uh, it was just wall-to-wall -wall Star Wars books. Floor to ceiling, you know, all the Zon books, all the, all the X-Wing books. Um, at that point, we probably had a few New Jedi Order books. Uh, that series probably partly finished uh, all the Bantam era books. And I just remember thinking, oh, this is going to be fun. And uh, that's how I got into it. And, and I've never stopped. I'm still, to this day, trying to finish reading the Legends timeline. I'm, I'm maybe 15, 20 books away. Hopefully oh, for next episode, solid. I can, I can be, oh, I've read a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I have read a bunch. Like I said, over 200 Star Wars books at this point. Uh, right That's now, I'm, right, I'm, I'm halfway through the, um, the Republic Commando series by Karen Travis. It is fantastic. Uh, I didn't love the first one. And, you know, was like, I'm not sure about this. But, oh, my gosh. The second one was just excellent. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, they're, they're weird in some ways. A little bit problematic here and there. I'm not going to get into that right now. But, um, you know, I, I kind of fell out of Star Wars for a few years. Um, when I was in high school, I would read the Bane books or some of the old Republic stuff, but wasn't really keeping up with it as much. I didn't go see the Clone Wars movie in theaters, which I'm kicking myself for now over 10 years later. I wasn't watching the Clone Wars while it came out, but when my wife and I were on our honeymoon, we stopped in a bookstore and I found the Young Jedi Knights like collected editions. And I oh, said, oh my gosh, yeah. I used to love these when I was a kid and I bought both of them. I read uh, the first six Young Jedi Knights books on my honeymoon. <laughs> That is and, a great uh, way to spend your honeymoon. <laughs> oh, no, isn't it crazy? Yeah, we were, we were at the beach, and, and uh, they're great little beach reads, and, and uh, that's how I got back into it and have been reading, you know, uh, about a Star Wars book a week ever since. That was that's way amazing. more than you wanted to know, I'm, I'm sure. No, that is, that is everything we all wanted to know. I, I promise you, that's pretty solid. That's really cool. I like that. I appreciate it's, the it's, enthusiasm. It's, yeah. Well, it's interesting to hear where everybody, how everybody got started, because we all had to get started somehow, right? It's not like yeah, it's, right. it's inane for us to just know what Star Wars is. So well, there's, and it's there's a start. Not, uh, you know, the, the Legends books, they're not encouraged in, in school. You know, we had to read all of these different books and we did AR, which was this, you know, uh, program. We had to have books that were at our reading level and the right number of pages. And we had to take a test on them afterwards. There were no Star Wars books in the catalog. Uh, no Star Wars books in my school library. In fact, I did a book report over uh, one of the um, the Jedi Academy books, which was like 300, 350 pages. I was in sixth grade. I'd read a, an adult <laughs> novel, and my teacher ridiculed me in front of the class and said, shouldn't you be reading something um, you know, more complex than this? 
And I was like, no, <laughs> wow. I'm in sixth grade. This book is way above my reading level. <laughs> That's an adult know, novel lady. <laughs> I'm going to start going to therapy pretty soon to deal with some of these issues, I'm sure. But uh, it's funny. You know, it was, it was one of these things where, yeah, we, if, if you were going to get into legends, it didn't happen by accident. You couldn't do it for school. It had to be because you loved Star Wars. Very true. Very, very true. And, it, you know, it, you're right. I never, it was never assigned to me. It's not like I had to read them. I wanted to. So, uh, you know, there's that. That's a big sure. thing. Right. Uh, and so, you know, we're, we're thinking about legends here. We've talked about this a little bit, but uh, I think one of the things that's important for us to talk about here is, is what is it about legends that makes it so iconic and distinctive to you? You know, we've got the new canon out now, and I think by and large, um, the new canon has been good. Um, there's been a few stinkers along the way, um, not pointing any fingers. Uh, but, you know, there's been a few that I thought, well, I could have done without that one. But um, by and large, I think they've, they've probably been like uh, bees on average, um, a few really great standout books. Um, but now that we've got something to compare it against, we've got quite a few new canon books since 2014. Um, the first, of course, being uh, New Dawn by John Jackson Miller. Anything after that, 2014 and on, is the new canon. So, uh, What is it, though, besides books being published prior to 2014 that makes a Legends book a Legends book, in your opinion? You know, it's very interesting. Uh, definitely, it was in my, from what I'm seeing, it's a different set of authors, for sure. Uh, maybe not, a, not 100%, but you, yeah, you're saying Yeah, for the most you, part. Right. Yeah seeing new names. Um, so the style is definitely a little different, but also legends, you know, it's very interesting because I'm looking at our show notes and, and you know, this is something we should probably talk about because this is, I didn't notice this until maybe 2013 after I started uh, looking at all the legends books and, and release and the release schedule as well. But uh, you want to go ahead with this one? Cause I think this is a really interesting one with the first bullet point that you have here about the Clone Wars? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, the history of, of Legends is really interesting. Of course, Freddie mentioned Splinter of the Mind's Eye. Um, that, I think, is, is our first Legends book, unless we want to count the original novelization, which was published before the film in 76. Um, but besides, you know, this very first era, which includes the Brian Daly Han Solo books, which, of course, were published before... Um, uh, you know, b before Heir to the Empire, um, we had like the old Neil L. Or L. Neil Smith, uh, Lando Calrissian books. There were just a few in this early era, 80s. But but starting with Heir to the Empire, that's when things really got kicked off. We'll come back to Heir to the Empire in a minute. But when it was being developed, when the expanded universe was in development, um, of course, hey, this is all George's stuff. So publishers came to George and they said, well, George... Uh, we're, we're going to bring some more authors on to write some more Star Wars books here. What can they and what can't they write about? And here's what Freddie's talking about. George explicitly said, don't touch the Clone Wars. Don't get into anything that happened before the original trilogy. I'm going to go back and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on that. I've got episodes one, two, and three I'm going to do. And so George gave full license. He said, I don't really care what you do with anything after Return of the Jedi. And that's where we get uh, Heir to the Empire. That's where we get Truce at Bakura, New Jedi Order, Legacy of the Force, Fate of the Jedi, so <laughs> forth and so on. I mean, there's just dozens and dozens after Return of the Jedi. I think Legends, to me, is a lot of post-Return of the Jedi material. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of post-Return of the Jedi material and a lot of character building from even more than what we witnessed in the movies. You know, it was character building on, on Luke Skywalker, on even the little characters in the, in the cantina. We gave them names, gave them histories. Um, it, it seemed like it was just trying to get as much as possible from what we had just off of the movies. We didn't have any characters created. You know, these were some new characters that, you know, Mara Jade was, was, came, came from, uh, I forget which, where she started. Um, Air of the but, Empire, uh, I think. I think it was Air of the Empire. But, you know, the, it was just character development and, 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 and world building. And, you know, the, it's still happening right now. They're still doing that in the, in the new books. But It's been a little were, safer. They've colored between the lines a little bit more. Exactly. So yeah. that's, that's the difference that I'm seeing so far with, you know, and I feel like we're still in the infancy, infancy of canon is um, 
Absolutely. You know, we have, it looks like we have a coloring book. We don't quite know what it's going to get colored into yet, but we have it. Whereas before it was just like, man, what is this? What is, what is this planet? You know, and, and it's just completely <laughs> yeah. different things and just sometimes out of left field. Right. Blank pages. Just oh, a, yeah. blank, a blank slate. I mean, true set about Kura itself was, is, is a very, <laughs> very odd, interesting book. I, I, I'll just say that. I'm not, I don't want to talk about it yet. We'll talk doesn't about it, that. Doesn't it have like uh, two different races of dinosaurs? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I read one of yeah. the new Jedi order books goes back and, and touches on it, or maybe it's, maybe it's something later. Fate of the Jedi was kind of a greatest hits of legends. It goes back and hits different planets and, and, plot points and follows up on them. One of those uh, was a follow-up to Truce at Bakura. And I just remember every page thinking, this is nuts. What is even <laughs> happening? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. But we'll save that for another episode. Sure. Of course. Yeah. So, so that's one of the things that's really iconic about the, the early days of Legends, especially the 90s, is oh, yeah. it was a lot of post-Return of the Jedi material. Um, once we got into the 2000s, uh, especially like 2008, 2009, 2010, we started seeing more Uh, tie-in material to the Clone Wars and then uh, especially getting into the Old Republic stuff which Mm. um, well there's some really cool Old Republic material in Legends but uh, in terms of other things that make the Legends universe iconic and distinctive you know I think one of the things that's that's very easy to to see is that um, Luke of course doesn't know about the prequels now that's obvious to us because the prequels weren't made yet uh, before 99 Luke is like trying to discover uh, tidbits about the Jedi of old. Hmm. And so a lot of the Bantam era books I'm talking about, like um, the three or four different trilogies. Of course, you've got the Jedi Academy trilogy, but then there's the, the Callista trilogy. I'm trying to think of the, the, the proper name for that trilogy. You've got the Black Fleet Crisis. And, um, it's trilogy after trilogy after trilogy of Luke trying to learn a little bit more about how to be a Jedi because he had what uh, a day, two to three days <laughs> yeah. with, with, um, with Obi-Wan and then two weeks tops on Dagobah. Don't you think any longer than that? I think it was about two weeks. Like, I mean, if you look at it, you could probably say it was over five, a week, you know, he didn't have much time. So he, he was on his own. He had to figure out how to be a Jedi and what a Jedi was. Yeah, and then so then the Legends books are, he's not just going to be a Jedi, but he has to now train new Jedis. And he basically knows nothing about how to be a Jedi. So a lot of those books are him just trying to get tidbits about, well, hey, this is what the Jedi used to be like. And uh, that's, it's kind of interesting to go back and read now that we have the prequels. But uh, that's one of the really iconic things. Um, what else do you, Freddie? Anything else that, that stands out about Legends? Uh, you know, what I really liked at a certain point in time, there, I can't remember exactly when, but there was actually a storybook group who was, I, I know it was uh, Leland Chi, Pablo Hidalgo, and I yeah. can't remember who else, but they were very, they were tasked with making sure that these books were not contradicting themselves. So, right. you know, the early days of Legends, you kind of, it's kind of interesting because, you know, some of those are not so, so, I, I don't know how to call it, maybe accurate or just in line with canon. But as you read on, you notice that they build off of each other or, um, you know, one character, if it died in this book, you will hear his death maybe in another book. Yeah. Or, or if, you they know. Start paying closer attention to continuity. Exactly. Continuity was really big for them. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. and you, you'll, you'll notice that in the books. You'll, you'll kind of see like the very beginning, the, the early 90s, you know, all the way from Splinter of the Mind's Eye, they just have this funny funny feeling about it which is very nice to to go back to every once in a while just beautifully perfectly nostalgic yeah exactly and you know i think that's what legends are it's just nostalgic absolutely even if you haven't read them yet you know you can still go back and experience like oh this is what star wars was like in 1991 Uh, for me the only other major thing that um, is iconic about legends especially now that we've got the sequel trilogy and that is um the big difference here is in The Last Jedi, you know, we find out Luke did not succeed with his Jedi Academy. All right. He was doing OK with it until he made his uh, snafu with Kylo or with, with Ben Solo here. He goes into his hut and whichever uh, interpretation on that you want to uh, take, that's fine with me. Uh, but he obviously shouldn't have even contemplated assassinating his nephew in his sleep. <laughs> and so yeah. Luke failed with his Jedi Academy in the new canon. 
but in Legends, Luke succeeded with his Jedi Academy. So you've got uh, some Jedi who had been in his Academy on Yavin 4, which, man, I love anything set on Yavin 4, for the record. Uh, he succeeds with that Jedi Academy. And so you've got Jason and Jaina Solo going from that Academy on to becoming prolific Jedi. You've got Kip Duran, Corin Horn, shout out to uh, the doctor <laughs> himself, uh, Corey Helton, with his love for, for Corin Horn. Uh, just unabashed love of Corin. Oh, he loves him so much. Oh, so much. And so uh, you've got, and then there's another major um, player from from the Jedi Academy. Oh, we'll have to cover it another day. I'm forgetting. There's a handful of Jedi who are trained by Luke who then go on to help train more Jedi. And You know, it's one of the things that works really well is you, you see a lot of Jedi coming up in mm-hmm. the legends universe after return of the jedi and you can kind of pick a favorite get attached to one uh, a personal favorite of mine is lobaka chewbacca's nephew the wookie jedi with his red lightsaber it's just wonderful and oh everything. yeah i'm right there with you on lobaka yes the, we're going to rename this podcast uh, instead of legends look back uh, lobaka look look back I say that five <laughs> times fast i can't even say it. lobaka <laughs> look back all right bad name uh, scrapping that idea uh, but, uh, you know, we've, we've talked about some of the things that make Legends what it is. And this has got me excited to open a book. I don't know about you. Oh, yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Let's move, let's move on into talking about some of our favorite Legends authors. We probably have to spend a lot of time on this. But uh, any standout authors to you from Legends? There really is a little bit of overlap. We've had Zahn come back. We've had uh, John Jackson Miller do both. Um, Lucino, of course, is written in both universes. But... Um, there, there really is a, a pretty distinct difference between the new canon authors and the Legends authors. Any stand out to you as some of your favorites, Freddie? Yeah, and you know what? I think this goes without saying that that anybody who who is an EU fan and who has read Legends books will agree that there's a handful of authors that we can all agree is on our list of you know our top three, even top five. Um, John Jackson Miller, which I know. We could all say is maybe a, a fan favorite, oh, especially with, because uh, of Kenobi. Oh, he really outdid yeah. himself with that one. Yeah, Timothy Zahn. I love a lot of his stuff. Oh yeah, Zahn, of course. Oh yeah, and those two guys are, are just heavy hitters. And then uh, James Luceno, I would say, are just definitely on, on the top of my list. Yeah, this is why we're becoming friends here, uh, Freddie. We've got some similar taste. Uh, you know, for me, I want to add in um, Aaron Alston. I'm actually writing a guide right now for you, Teeny. Um, if you haven't really discovered our reading guides, uh, really encourage listeners to, to check these out. Uh, we've got a, a handful of, of writers for Utini who are cranking out these reading guides saying like, hey, uh, if you want more books to read about Mara Jade, uh, if you want more books to read about Yoda, or uh, books that have to do with The Phantom Menace, books uh, by a particular author. We've got John Jackson Miller up there, Claudia Gray, Timothy Zahn. Uh, in fact, Carl just wrote one today today all right uh by alexander freed that was published and so um but the one i want to throw out there is aaron alston writing a guide about aaron alston right now and um he died tragically in 2014 rest in peace um he really just captures the the heart of star wars the the humor of star wars uh his stuff is so witty and it's just so energetic it's just it just uh moves at a perfect pace got great character development Alston wrote for the the Wraith Squadron books in the X-Wing series, and then he was in the catalog of of authors writing later in the timeline um, in Legacy and and Fate of the Jedi. Have you read any of Aaron Alston, Freddie? Yeah, actually, I have. I would just I I would say he's just up there along with all my other favorite authors. There, there's just so many of them, and you know we'll we'll go through yours as well because I I would say they're probably just about the same, but. uh, He, he's definitely, I, I, I like reading a lot of their books. Let's just say that. All right, good. Yeah. Uh, only other two I want to mention, these are maybe um, less n- noteworthy in terms of they don't receive as much notoriety, but uh, another deceased author, uh, writer, producer is, is Brian Daly. Uh, Brian Daly, of course, wrote and produced the uh, original Star Wars audio dramas. Have you listened to those? Oh man, those are those are fantastic. They're just so iconic, so, so iconic. iconic. Uh, and and they really capture the heart 
of Star Wars. And, and, and that's what he was so good at. He actually, uh, there's a great interview with him in an issue of, of Star Wars Insider. I've gotten a collected edition over here on the shelf. Uh, really, really in-depth interview. I'd encourage all listeners to, to seek it out. I'll try to find the, more information about them. But Brian Daly, uh, he said for him, writing Star Wars is easy because he's basically Han Solo. He says, I never <laughs> yeah. have to think about it, what Han Solo would say because it's exactly what I would say. And he wrote the original Han Solo trilogy. Um, it was written in the early to mid 80s. I need to double check dates on those. Brian Daly wrote those. He also wrote... Um, this, another audio drama, Mission to Ord Mantell, which I listened to this year, which is really cool, short, uh, quick. And then uh, I really like John Ostrander in the comics. He wrote uh, the Quinlan Boss series. He wrote the, the Legacy series with, with uh, Cade Skywalker. His stuff's fantastic. Absolutely. Let's move yeah, on I, I, to uh, our favorite Legends books then. Were you going to say something else, Freddie? Oh, no. I was just going to say that um everybody you just named it, it just going back and looking at the books that they've written on uh on the utini website is just i'm just remembering some of these old books that i need to dust off and get back to reading there we go shameless plug again to uh, visit <laughs> utini.com number two and you can of course uh order books through our affiliate links which helps us uh pay the bills in terms of you know freddie and i hey we're not seeing that money but uh we're, we're sure that it's going to a good use uh, it's going to go for hosting the site and there's all kinds of expenses. We do different, um, services that, you know, uh, help us keep things running in terms of our automation and record keeping, uh, air table, you know, we just have all kinds of stuff running behind the scenes at Utini that isn't free. So you can order books through the site, of course, Amazon affiliate links, but, uh, you know, let's move on Freddie into talking about our uh, favorite legends books. Now this is the meat of it. This is the heart. Okay. This is the good stuff. Um, there's going to be a few basic books that uh, everybody's going to agree are just really good. And, and uh, if there's one or two that you know are not your personal favorite, by and large, these handful of books are just uh, beloved by the Star Wars com community. That would include, of course, the original Thrawn trilogy, which now we're about to get our third Thrawn trilogy. What do you think of the, the new Thrawn announcement? You know, I'm I'm always... I, I like Thrawn. I I think he's just, I mean, a lot of people have their different opinions on Thrawn, but there's just something about him and, and, and just bringing back the old memories of, of, of legends. And I'm so glad that out of all the people they brought back, they brought Thrawn back. That is I, just the one thing I have to say. I think more important, uh, more importantly to me, rather than bringing Thrawn back, I think it's exciting that they brought Zahn back. Oh yeah. So, and it's like, Hey, uh, you want another trilogy? Go for it. And so it's pretty exciting to me. Uh, you know, the sky's the limit with what he can do. Um, you know, we've got, of course, the original Thrawn trilogy. We're talking about Heir to the Empire, Dark Force Rising, and The Last Command. Uh, in fact, I've got a, a teenager at my church. Um, I'm a minister. And so um, we've got a, a big following amongst the teens in terms of their, their love for Star Wars. And uh, one of the teenagers, Noah, just returned uh, Dark Force Rising to me the other day. He just finished it. So he'll be moving on to The Last Command pretty soon. And I got to say, I couldn't be prouder. Couldn't be prouder. <laughs> I'm uh, glad so, you're just spreading this among the new generation. <laughs> spreading the gospel, of course. That's what I do for a living. But then also spreading the gospel of Star Wars. Okay. Uh, and so we've got the original Thrawn trilogy. I'd say the Revenge of the Sith novelization, of course, is, is maybe the best Star Wars book. I think in terms I would of say so. Writing style, it, it's it's on an, another level. Completely, completely on another level. And then we've got uh, Kenobi, um, the Bane trilogy. Um, I and mean, I think for most people, these are are really high in terms of their, um, you know, they're going to be enduring. They're not going away anytime soon. Um, they're just going to be unequivocal recommendations, as well as uh, one that I see you've got on your list, Freddie. You want to talk about Darth Plagueis for a second? Oh yeah, Darth Plagueis was, and if you listen to, I forget which episode, it was one of the very first episodes of uh, The Living Force, but I, I talked about this as being one of my favorites, even though we were only talking about canon books, but I believe Darth oh, yeah, Plagueis, broke the rules. I broke the rules and I did it willingly. <laughs> but you know, Darth <laughs> Plagueis is one of those books where it, it it's, I don't even know how to describe it. It's right there with Kenobi, in my opinion, where Unless, unless 
we're being told something else in another canon book or in a movie, to me, it's still it's still very true, right? So, uh, and a lot of what they talk about in Darth Plagueis is, is mentioned in the prequels. So you can kind of relate those things together. But Darth Plagueis is, is one of my most favorite Legends books, um, mainly because it goes through something that we never have really gone through before, which is Palpatine. Right, right. It's it's the you know the have you seen the Joker? Yes. Okay, I haven't seen it yet, but you know, uh, the idea here is you take the origin story of this extremely iconic villain, and um, you know it's heartbreaking and and uh, dark, and um, you know this is really what Plagueis was. It was it was Palpatine's rise to power, but it's also you know in many ways about Maul, and you know of course Plagueis, the titular character here. Um, uh, did you ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? It just takes that little <laughs> snippet from the movie from Revenge of the Sith and. And it makes what it's like a 500 page book. It's massive. He goes to a whole nother level with Darth Plagueis. Yeah, it, it, I would say that book, just if any, if you have not read it yet, I would say put that on your list of to do because it is, it, it describes a lot, it explains a lot, but you also just, when you watch the movies again after reading it, you're like, oh man, I get it. Yeah, and, and it makes, for me, it makes the prequels so much better. Um, oh, yeah. it, it enhances them in the best way that a novel should. Uh, ideally, a good EU book should make you go back to the movies and say, oh, I love these even more now. And uh, I would actually really recommend the audiobook. Um, there's a different reader for that one. See if I can um, use a good old fashioned Google here to, to find out the, the narrator. He only does this one. It's his only Star Wars audiobook. And it is just so rich to listen to. And toward, especially toward the end, the climax, I won't spoil it. There's this section where he just uh, lays it on thick with his Palpatine, um, his Palpatine voice. And he starts monologuing. And every time I listen to it, and it's pretty much a yearly re-listen for me, uh, whatever I'm doing, I just stop and cackle. I mean, it's absolutely deliciously evil. So uh, good. See if I can find the, the, the narrator on that. Uh, you want to move on to some of your other favorite uh, yeah, sure. EU books, Legends books, as I find that in the meantime. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so, you know, again, I'll hit Truce of Bakura. We talked about that. And I feel like that deserves a whole episode because I keep talking about it. Um, and, and I know a lot of people will probably just laugh because it's not, it's maybe not one of the best books, but it's, it's uh, very interesting. Uh, it, let's just, you know, just to preface it, it takes a sci-fi approach to Star Wars, which, you know, Star Wars is sci-fi, but it's mainly fantasy. So it kind of throws in a little yeah. too much sci-fi at times. Um, and then uh, in episode zero, we actually talked about a couple of, of really good books and very, you know, especially in this month, uh, Death Troopers is, is very different. And it hits, it hits a horror genre, which I don't believe to, uh, Star Wars before that had ever hit. Not, um, not quite like Death Troopers. You had some no. like um, kind of, kind of, um, Goosebumps-esque books, those are more spooky than horror. Like yeah, play, playfully spooky. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, of course, I would say this is on a lot of people's list, but Air the Empire. Uh, Kenobi. So good. I mean, he's, he, we're going to spend at least a whole episode on that. Uh, Zon's yeah. so groundbreaking with it. Absolutely. Especially for the time. Like, you got to consider that, too. That, that's, that's something that not a lot of people will consider is look at the time we were in, look when he wrote it and just this book coming out. Imagine seeing this thing and reading it for the first time when it was published. Oh yeah. I, I can't, I can't imagine what it was like. Uh, I, I think yeah. I discovered that one. Uh, I, I remember buying it from the used bookstore in my hometown. when I was like 10 or 12. Um, but I didn't get to it until 2013. I didn't read it until, um, I was in college and oh yeah, it was just so excellent. So excellent. Um, you know, in terms of the new characters he develops and the settings as well, great. It's got some great planets and some good new aliens. And of course the villain in Thrawn, uh, what's not to like about uh, the original Thrawn trilogy. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, one more before I, I throw it back to you, but uh, I would say the, the last book that I, I will always keep on my list of favorite legends books and i know it's not really a legends book but it is a guide it's the uh, essentials reader essential readers companion 
everybody's going to have, have this. Picked, yeah. If you have not picked that up, what it is is, is uh, Pablo Hidalgo went through every single book. Everything, I, w- I would say more than just books. Oh, Everything even the was, short stories, the comics. Yeah, the short stories in the, in the magazines. Uh, he went through everything and pretty much gave a synopsis of what it was about and, and the background of, of you know, what happened during this time, what was going on. You know, for the instance, behind the scenes info. Exactly. So like, for instance, in Death Troopers, he also talks about the campaigns that were going on, you know, through Star Wars Galaxies and, and you know, online and all this other stuff that you would not have gotten anywhere else. So I think that's an absolute must. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. He's got original artwork in there, too, which is really cool. Um, and in some ways, besides fan art, you know, it's, it's the only artwork we're going to have besides the cover art on a lot of these books. And, uh, they deserve they deserve the art. And so it's, it's great in terms of that. You, you just settle in by the fire uh, next to the Essential Readers Companion. You can spend a whole, a whole day on this thing. <laughs> you could it's probably spend a week <laughs> or more. <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, what about you? What are your, uh, some of your favorites? Yeah, I'll take a crack at it. So we've mentioned a few of the you know, major foundational legends books here. In terms of some that might slip under the radar, I really love John Jackson Miller's uh, collection of short stories in Lost Tribe of the Sith. I just recently went back through this uh, as I was writing about Miller for a collection on the site. And, um, he does such an incredible job in, in fleshing out the Lost Tribe, which of course is a tie-in much later in the timeline for the, uh, let's see, is, is it the, the Legacy of the Force? No, it's, it's Fate of the Jedi. There's this, mm-hmm. this Lost Tribe of the Sith that's been on this, this island planet uh Kesh is the name of the planet and yeah. uh, now they're they're reintroduced i mean just hundreds of sith coming back into the galaxy and it's really cool and so this is the the story of how they you know started their culture as they got stranded on this planet uh yeah and when few you different uh characters to kind of cling on to as you go through two or three short stories a piece before he moves on to a different point in the in the series so you've read that one as well yeah, I was going to say that that one is is one of those books that or it, it, I think it was a, an ebook that I first picked up. Yeah, um, it, it really kind of put the Sith into perspective for me at that time. Another great book about the Sith is Darth Maul Shadowhunter. Um, this one is is a Phantom Menace prequel novel about Darth Maul having his um, Kind of his rise to power is he's trying to prove himself to Palpatine. He's still an apprentice, and he kind of goes off the rails and assassinate, trying to assassinate a, a Jedi Padawan uh, who's also trying to prove herself. You know, she's trying to prove that hey, she can cut it as a Jedi. And so you kind of have these two parallel characters that you're kind of rooting for and rooting against. And everybody loves Maul, but it's a really likable um, young female Jedi. I don't remember her name. I have to go back and and reread it. It's a great uh, droid in I-5 in Darth Maul Shadow Hunter. Gets into the underlevels, the underworld of, of uh, Coruscant. Ah, oh, just a fantastic Legends book. Moving on yeah. from there, I love, um, I love all the Jude Watson books. She's got these three series that are interconnected. And they're, they're, they're published by Scholastic. They're for probably a 10 to 12-year-old audience. They're like 120, 130 pages each of large print. And, uh, you can read the book in probably two hours um there's the jedi apprentice series about obi-wan under the tutelage of qui-gon and then uh, moving on from there you've got the jedi quest series of obi-wan training anakin and then uh, there's a third series because hey if 30 books isn't enough already let's add another 10 more into the mix (laughs) it's um it's called is it fate of the jedi that can't be right Hmm. Yeah, yeah maybe, we'll have to we'll have to go so. back and, and check. I've got that. it over here on the shelf. Um, the, is it the Last Jedi? Oh, there's there's ten of them, and it starts off with Obi Wan after Revenge of the Sith. Um, he finds like another a Padawan who survived the purge. Uh, he tries to bring him in, and they work together to you know try to take down Darth Vader, but they have to be careful about how they do so. So it's kind of a undercover special ops series. Oh man, so good. Uh, they're so so unique in that I think a lot of Star Wars fans have snoozed on them because, you know, hey, maybe they're for younger kids. But um, I recently went through all 40 of those books over the last, like, two years. And 
Wow. I really loved it. They're easy to pick up and read. You know, you can just binge them. She does a great job at developing each little planet, a couple of characters in each one that are uh, only in that one book, maybe another two or three, but you know, for the most part, self-contained. Um, she gets into some some crazy stuff, especially for Qui-Gon. Um, some some non-canonical material in terms of an illicit love affair for Qui-Gon. Um, those are just <laughs> so worth it. So worth it. Uh, e- not especially easy to pick up. Um, there's only ebooks for the second two of those series, Jedi Quest, and then um, you know, the third series. I'll, I'll find the the title on that in a second. I did find the title on, uh, or I found that the narrator on Darth Plagueis, and that's Daniel Davis. Shout out to Daniel Davis for such an excellent job on that. Oh, yeah. Excellent Absolutely. narration. Uh, rounding it out for me, I would add in a couple of comics series to my favorite of Legends. I love the Dark Empire comics. I really want to have a whole episode about Dark Empire. God, I love those so much. It's so nostalgic for me in a couple of different ways, but it's like, Luke has to turn to the dark side in order to, to take down the resurrected emperor. I mean, if that's not enough to hook you, I don't know what is. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They're so, so unique and, and, and weird in some ways, but, but uh, dark in a, in a really, really um, groundbreaking way at the time. I think those came, first one came out in 91. Um, so especially relevant now with the resurrected emperor, something like that, in The Rise of Skywalker. So uh, now it's the best time to read Dark Empire before oh, the rise of Skywalker. You can have the inside scoop. And then finally, <laughs> for me, the, the legacy comics I mentioned, um, I think it's John Ostrander and, and Jan Dersima. Well, we'll work on that for um, our episode about those, I'm sure. But uh, it's, it's set 100 years after um, the, the, fate of the, the Legacy of the Force series. I mean, it's just uh, way after everything else in the timeline. Um, great, great character development in terms of uh, some of the, the main characters in that series. And it's 50 issues, so it's enough to really sink your teeth into, but not too much to be overwhelming. Um, everybody I've recommended those to has loved them. Any others for you that we haven't mentioned yet, Freddie? You know, uh, when you mentioned comics, and, and I would say, uh, I, I think it was around 2013, I can't remember exactly when. Uh, it was the last Star Wars titled run before Disney scooped them up, and they just had the most beautiful cover art that I've ever seen ever. Uh, I, I don't even know how to describe it. The, even ep- just the first one just had the shades of blue and some red, and it was they were beautiful covers. The the books themselves they don't pan out as well. Um, you know, there's it's just kind of goofy some things that happen because obviously yeah. we've got we've got the sequels now, but I think that alone the cover art was just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, but uh, nostalgic in the way that makes Legends so. Oh good. yeah, very very nostalgic. I found the name of that series. It was The Last of the Jedi. If that's not confusing uh. enough, it's The Last <laughs> of the Jedi. So cut me some slack here, listeners, for getting confused on that. Uh, not sorry. the Last Jedi, the Last of the Jedi. Uh, but a good series, uh, definitely worth it. So, so you know, moving on, Freddie, is, is there anything currently that you're reading for Star Wars? And we're talking about some nostalgic stuff here, but we can dip our toe outside of Legends for you know 20 seconds here. Uh, what, what's currently on your on your bookshelf? Right now, I'm actually reading uh, Black Spire in the canon, and okay, yeah, uh, cool. I'm what you know I'm switching between two right now, and the second one would be Kenobi. I'm rereading that, that one. Both of us. Excellent. Yeah, that's got to be coming yeah. up soon then. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, Black Spider, I thought it was really good, but we won't get into that now. Save that for the other podcast. Listen to the, <laughs> the two-part round table. Of it. They did a great job with those. Yeah, uh, it was really good. I, I really came to appreciate that book a lot more after listening to the Living Force coverage of that. Uh, and then uh, we want to, of course, continue to plug for readers to, to go back to the website, and check out some of the other stuff we've cranked out recently. If you've listened to episode zero, we want to encourage you to pick up the collection that Charles wrote just out of pure excitement that we're going to be doing this show. He heard that we were talking about Death Troopers and Red Harvest, and he said, I'm going to have to write about that. So he wrote a, a horror collection for the site, a Halloween collection. Um, it's got uh, horror. It, uh, it's got, of course, Death, Death Troopers and Red Harvest. He also mentions um, the 
uh, Boba Fett's Ship of Fear book, which is a good kind of spooky one. Um, I've got the the glove of Darth Vader. What are some of the other scary ones on that list? Do you remember? Uh, no, I can't recall. It, I just have to say, I love, I love that, that Charles just heard, heard our, uh, our pilot episode and just went out there and just took care of it. <laughs> yeah. He knocked that out quick. <laughs> he did. It's, it's excellent. Oh, um, uh, he talks about tales from Vader's castle. Now got oh, yeah, that, that, that second that run really on good. that going on. Those are just excellent in that, that line of, uh, Star Wars meets spookiness in the best way possible. We've got other collections that were just recently published between last episode and now uh, featuring Mandalorians, Boba Fett, as has been mentioned. We've got a John Jackson Miller collection, Alexander Freed, and Christy Golden. This is all just the, within the last two weeks. So some good stuff being put out there. So th- thank you so much for listening, guys. We're getting started with this podcast, trying to get our feet on the ground here. You were right in on the ground floor of this thing. So. Uh, where were you when we started Legends Look Back? Uh, uh, you'll remember. That does it for this week. Thanks for listening to the show. We'll be back in a couple of weeks with another episode as Freddie and I uh, talk about these excellent books. And who knows, we might even have one of our awesome team members by then joining us. Um, in the meantime, you can follow the main Utini Twitter account at Utini underscore US or, of course, the Living Force pod at living force pod i'm on twitter personally as jared q mays and uh, what about you freddie i'm at uh wake up freddie wake up freddie we're, we're gonna have to get the story on your twitter handle one day i love <laughs> it i love it so check out uh, our new reading guides and uh, play around with the Eugenie bookshelf i used that in the wild the other day in terms of trying to find a, a star wars book and i said is this on my collection is this is this on my shelf already uh in the meantime keep the Eugenie fan code and be a force for positivity in the fandom. So, Freddie, until next time, may the force be with you. Take care, Jared. May the force be with you. This has been a Utini production. 